Our focus on the program is on sustainable development goals, that's the SDGs. We shall be exploring the implementation of the scheme and likely impacts. To do this, I have with me Global Chairman, UN Rescue, Mr. Steve Midala. Well, I say Ambassador Steve Midala. Ambassador, you're welcome to Business Express. Thank you for having me. Good to have you. Well, Ambassador, to start with, the SDGs, uh, well, I say, to, to transform this world that we live in, the United Nations came up with 17 goals, so call them the sustainable goals, which has to do with uh, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water, sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, others are uh, reduced inequality, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, and a whole lot of others, 17 of them. In your own honest assessment, where are we on the SDGs coming from the MDG angle? Well, I thank you so much. Uh, you have captured all the 17 goals. And uh, actually, the 17 goals were initiated to ensure humanity is impacted globally, not just Nigeria. <coughs> and um, this was because uh, the body where I belong to, UN Rescue Services, an international organization that has a charter with the United Nations Economic and Social Council, where I double as the director of African Development and Foreign Affairs, as well as international chairman for security and intelligence, initiated the 17 goals to ensure that all over the world, poverty is eradicated, health care is delivered, education is delivered, and a whole lot, as you mentioned. Now, um, before the year 2000, when the initial Millennium Development Goals were established, it was because the UN ECOSOC identified about 2.5 billion people globally were living below poverty line. And their definition of living below poverty line is if you cannot spend $2 on yourself and every member of your family per day, you are actually living below poverty line. Now. Um, Millennium Development Goals, MDGs were initiated and uh, along the line Vision 2010 was also set. Yeah. Now Vision 2010 came and went and uh, the Development Goals were not achieved as expected. And then we also initiated the Vision 2020. So by the year 2015, thereabout, the, the entire UN ECOSOC came together and reviewed what they have been doing. And they discovered that out of the initial 2.5 billion people, only like 1.7 billion people were affected across the world. And that means that we have done appreciably well because out of 2.5 billion, only like 800 million, we are still left below poverty line. And we tried to identify where are these 800 million people located. And, and they were traced to Sub-Saharan Africa with Big Brother Nigeria hosting at least one third of that population. Hmm. And that's why at a point Nigeria was declared the poverty capital of the world. And uh, knowing that they have done appreciably well, they decided, okay, can we review what we've been doing because we have done appreciably well. And so uh, the MDGs was now changed to SDGs to sustain what we've been doing. And uh, since then, we tried to see that by the end of 2020, we achieved all these goals. Now, mid-year, last year, 2020, knowing that we are going to exit 2020 and Division 2020 was winding up, we now decided, okay, uh, from 2015 to then, what have we done? Have we achieved, have we impacted on the life of those 800 million people? And we discovered that only like one third of that was also impacted wow. upon. And, uh, the mandate given to us going forward from 2021 to 2030 is action program on eradication of extreme poverty and hunger. Now, as the director of African Development under UN ECOSOC, even though I partially live in Stockholm, Sweden, I couldn't remember back and, and expect that and claim that I'm impacting lives here. 
that's why I had to come back home and then insist that I pioneer this program myself under our UN Rescue, UN ECOSOC programs. Yes, I was going to come to the UN Rescue, UN ECOSOC. Yes. With these numbers, 2.5 billion people below poverty rate reduced to 800 uh, billion or is it million? Yes. All these figures yes. coming with uh, the impact of COVID-19, do yes. uh, nations globally are actually recovering fast. Has that impacted negatively to, to those numbers and the UN rescue what what are you doing what are the activities being put in place to ensure that this gap is breached yeah well that's a good question um, like you said along the line the COVID-13 and so it didn't help our programs where actually didn't go smoothly but we thank God COVID has also taught us a big lesson all over the globe we learned a big lesson because initially, for instance, my people from Nigeria used to go to India, UK, America, depending on where they can afford for medical tourism. Now, COVID has helped us to identify that no matter who you are, whether you are the president, you are the minister or senator, you can't travel without clearances. And so even those of them, and by the way, how many of our population can afford to travel abroad for medical uh, checkups and medical attention? So we are, we we have now identified that we need to do something back home. And so we have initiated a project to deliver at least 1,000 hospitals across each of our, our six geopolitical zones to impact our people. Um, education. COVID has also taught us a big lesson. When the lockdown set in, you now realize that whether we like it or not, children were indoors, the parents were indoors. And so we can't remain, remain indoors forever without education going on. So. Yeah, because of COVID, we have learned that we need to set, uh, especially electronic education has to go on. So we have started providing uh, the online tablets, services. online services, even telemedicine is now ongoing. Our hospitals are going to be uh, fully telemedicine and then uh, doctors in Nigeria can collaborate with doctors abroad, whether in America or anywhere in the world, in Europe and UK and all of those. And then they can conduct surgeries even online, with the help of other doctors. So these are many more are what we are doing. In the area of education, for instance, we have also initiated a one million classroom project going forward from 2021 to 2030. Our idea is uh, to deliver uh, schools. And so anywhere we're building houses, we are also initiated initiative to build at least 10,000 housing units across each of the six geopolitical zones, having identified that Nigeria has deficit of housing, minimum 22 to 25 million deficit. Government cannot do all these things by themselves, so we identified... I was, I was to bring that up. All, yes. all of this, uh, it, it's a huge investment. Yes, the sir. government cannot do it all alone. Yes. How Part of the goals, particularly goal 17, yes. is to raise capital in-house and also international contributions. How are you raising finances to do all of this? And with the lessons you've mentioned, COVID has taught us... Yes. There is a deadline for SDGs, too, just like we had with MDGs. Yes. Will this not also affect the deadline? Well, um, we thank God now that this is the beginning of a, the deadline of one decade going forward. So those 800 million people, those of them that have not been affected, we hope that in this decade will achieve, uh, will actually impact on their lives. And so I come from Northeast, Garkida to be precise, is my hometown in Adamawa, Gombe local government. The insurgents have already ransacked our people. Uh, villages around my hometown, not less than 20 to 30 of them have been raised down. So we know that those people in the ID, IDP camps, they deserve a better life. If it is possible for me to impact their lives, provide shelter for them, school their children, make, deliver medical uh, care for them, that would be my greatest joy. So we are doing all of those. And uh, the One Million Classroom Project is actually meant for not just the underage children, but also out-of-school children. Nigeria has between 10 to 15 million out-of-school children. Some of, this, some of these out-of-school children, they have outgrown the age of even going back to secondary school, not to talk of primary school. And for us, that is a dangerous uh, category of Nigerians. And those are the breeding ground where the bad boys go and then they either conscript, especially the insurgents, they conscript our people, my, our youth, or they Brainwash like, them. Like, like with, with, with all of these challenges, a whole lot of funding is yes. needed. Is yes. the United Nations funding this, or you, you, the, the organization is raising capital from within? Yes, we have this initiative called UN United Nations International Noble Ambassadors.
So these are our noble ambassadors, uh, people like you, uh, who people experienced people actually who have achieved all they want to achieve in their lives, and so uh, their joy is to see that humanity is impacted upon. Some of them are professors, different category, all walks of life. They come from there, and so we have identified different areas of offshore funding. And we are doing this to assist our government. In fact, we are also aware that Nigeria has even issue of uh, both local and then uh, foreign debts. So those areas are areas we want to help our government to reach out to our people. We can't do this outside the government, but uh, we are insisting that this is a, a private initiative to assist our government to deliver education, to deliver health care, to deliver um, you can't even actually say you are eradicating poverty and hunger without feeding the people. It's, it's not. It's not. It's so not. So I can tell you that from our organization, in the past couple of weeks, we have given out contract to source for local rights. As government is saying, they want to encourage uh, local farmers. Our idea is to set up uh, rice and other products farms, and then our members across the six geopolitical zone uh, will actually engage in. Uh, Ambassador Big Steve time. Midala, time is not our friend. We have 17 goals, yes. initiatives are more to yes. the top of this, to meet all of this. So I think we'll, we'll get to talk more about this Thank some you so other much. time. Thank you so very much for you. sharing insights on way forward.